Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, I got this integral off the channel Maths 505. Um, I tried to find a better way or at least a different way um, to solve it than he used. I wasn't successful, except in a very minor way. Uh, my solution does diverge from his um, slightly. Um, but basically, this is going to be the same solution that he offered up. Um, but, you know, I justify copying it because this is a channel on Feynman integration. And um, this is solvable with Feynman integration. So I'm going to go ahead and feature it on this channel also. If you're watching it, it has been several days since he's posted his video. And I'll also link to his video in the description. Um, but let's just get started. So, um, we're going to create a function of t represented as an integral that is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x uh, times 1 minus, not cosine x, but cosine of tx over x squared dx. And we will note that if we take our function f of t, and evaluated at t is equal to zero, we get zero because cosine of zero is one, one minus one is zero. And if we take our function of t and evaluate it at the point one, we recover our original integral, which we've called i. All right, so now using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign on this, which says that we can take the derivative of this function of t represented as an integral simply by taking the derivative with respect, the partial derivative with respect to t of the integrand, and then evaluating it from 0 to infinity. So our f prime of t is going to be equal to, our bounds don't change, 0 to infinity of, let's see, this is going to give us e to the negative x sine tx over x. And you can pause the video and just verify that. If you take the partial with respect to t of the integrand, this is actually, this is what you get. All right. So if you're satisfied with that, let's continue. If we evaluate f prime at the point t is equal to zero, we get zero because sine of zero is zero. And we're going to do this one more time. We're going to take f double prime of t using the same method. That's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x cosine tx dx. And this is where my solution uh, diverges slightly from his. Um, he used Euler's formula to solve this. I am going to be using the normal method of integration by parts. Uh, I wish I, have I had thought of this integral uh, before him so I could integrate this using Euler's formula because I think it's cooler. But since he did it that way, I'm going to just use integration by parts. Um, and this is how that goes. So really quick, I'm just going to Make another f double prime of t here, and we'll just keep track of our work when we do our integration by parts. So we use the tabular method or the di method if you watch uh, black pen, red pen. Um, let's see, what are we going to be differentiating? Let's, let's do cosine tx. It really doesn't matter. And we will integrate e to the negative x. All right, differentiating cosine tx with respect to x, of course, is going to give us negative negative t sine tx, sine tx. Integrating e to the negative x just gives us e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x. All right, differentiating again, um, let's see, we're going to get a negative um, t squared cosine tx e to the negative x there. All right, so f double prime of t is equal to this times this evaluated from zero to infinity. Let's see. If we evaluate that at the point uh, t is equal to infinity, um, 
or I'm sorry, x is equal to infinity, we will get zero due to this term right here. Um, if we evaluate it at zero, however, we will get one times negative one, but don't forget we are actually subtracting that bound, so it just becomes one. All right. And then we'll also need to evaluate this times this from x is equal to zero to infinity, and that's going to give us zero. Sine of zero is zero times this would be zero, and e to the negative infinity is zero times this is also zero. All right, so this doesn't do anything. And then, all right, let's, uh, let's get plus, minus, plus. Uh, so we're, then we're going to have plus, um, t squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine tx e to the negative x, which is just uh, f double prime of x. So this is plus t squared. Oh, I'm sorry, that's actually minus. Minus t squared f double prime of t. Again, we will be subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of t squared uh, cosine tx e to the negative x. And the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x cosine tx is just f double prime of t. So this is what we end up with. All right, so now what we'll do is we will add t squared f double prime of t to both sides. So we get t squared f double prime of t plus f double prime of t is equal to 1. If we factor out an f double prime of t, uh, we will get t squared plus 1, and then if we divide both sides by t squared plus 1, what we end up with is this. This implies that f double prime of t is equal to 1 over t squared plus 1. All right. So I'm just going to erase this, and we'll just leave it as f double prime of t is equal to 1 over t squared plus 1. All right, let me erase some stuff really quick. All right, but we're not really interested in f double prime of t. We actually want f of t, so we can plug in 1 to get our the value for i. Uh, so we've got to go backwards. So now we'll integrate f double prime of t. Um, we all know what that is. That's going to be arctangent t plus c. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase this f prime of t. And we have arctangent t plus a constant of integration. Um, we can solve for that constant by using the fact that if we plug in t is equal to 0, we get 0. That means 0 is equal to arctangent of 0, which is 0 plus c, which means c is equal to 0. So our f prime of t is actually just equal to arctangent t. All right, so we got to go backwards one more time. So f of t is equal to the indefinite integral of f prime of t dt, which is equal to the indefinite integral of arc tangent t dt. All right, we're going to use integration by parts again to solve the integral of arc tangent t um, with respect to t. A lot of you probably already know what that is equal to, but I'm going to show it anyway because it's not a standard integral. So we'll break out integration by parts again, and let's see. We will differentiate arctangent t, and we will integrate dt. All right. Differentiating arctangent t, of course, gives us 1 over t squared plus 1. Integrating um, dt will just give us t. All right. So the integral of arctangent t dt is equal to t arctangent t. Uh, <laughs> minus the integral of t over t squared plus 1 dt.
right. Make sure I did that right. Yeah. Differentiating our tangent t, that gives us 1 over t squared plus 1. We integrated dt, that gives us t. So we have our tangent t times t minus the integral of t over t squared plus 1. Okay. So. All right, what is the integral of t over t squared plus one? Well, let's just go ahead and put a, let's make this a minus one half and we'll put a two t up there. Um, so this is going to equal negative one half, or this thing is equal to negative one half natural log of, t squared plus 1, right? Yeah. Because this is basically du over u, where u is t squared plus 1. So we'll just have, yeah, minus 1 half natural log t squared plus 1. All right. So f of t, f of t is equal to t arctangent t minus one half natural log of t squared plus one. That's our f of t. That's all it is. All right. Now we just plug in one to get i. So i is equal to this thing evaluated at t is equal to one. That'll be one times our tangent of one, which is pi over four. So we get pi over four minus uh, one half of the natural log of t squared plus one when t is one, that's the natural log two. So one half natural log two. And that's the answer. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that.